Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us. I want to first start by wishing everyone a very happy Earth Day. Uh, this is a very special day that we've been celebrating for decades. It's a day to think about uh, the Earth, our place in it, our connection to it, and certainly to commit to uh, keeping it, well, not keeping it, but working to uh, reverse some of the damage uh, that we have done to it, uh, keeping it habitable for all living things uh, that, uh, that, um, that live here together with us. Uh, and so I want to wish everyone a very happy Earth Day. Uh, today, we're just going to be speaking very briefly about uh, the Leaders Summit that has been uh, convened by President Biden and Canada's climate target uh, that was announced. So what occurred to me when I heard the new target uh, that was announced uh, by the Prime Minister and, uh, and the government uh, today, uh, a target of, 30, of 40 to 45 percent below 2005 levels by 2030, I thought uh, I'm going to have to explain to the young climate activists that we'll be meeting with uh, in, the, in, um, in the days to come to talk about the future, why their government wasn't ambitious on their behalf, why their government felt that it wasn't possible for people in Canada to do as much to leave the world a habitable place and to prevent runaway global warming as the people in other countries. Uh, that's the first thing that occurred to me. So as I said, what we have done uh, today, what the government has done is announced that it's, seek it's seeking to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 40 to 45% below 2005 levels by 2030. When in fact, what the government needed to announce today is that it was planning to adopt a 60% reduction target in greenhouse gas emissions from 2005 levels by 2030 with clear enforceable targets and timelines. And the reason why that should have been the announcement today is because we know that 60% is the minimum target that Canada needs to adopt in order to do its fair share and to be consistent with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, climate change Warning to hold to the Paris Agreement goal of no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. Scientists have been very clear that Canada needs to dramatically up its contribution to at least 55 to 60 percent uh, as its nationally determined contribution to do its fair share to keep the rise in global temperatures close to one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The reality, and it's hard sometimes for people in Canada to, to, um, to accept this reality because it's painful and it doesn't correspond to our image of ourselves. Uh, the reality is that Canada is a top 10 emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. Canada is a top five emitter per capita of greenhouse gas emissions. Our greenhouse gas emissions increased last year, even in the midst of the pandemic, and we have barely succeeded in moving the needle in reducing greenhouse gas emissions at all. We have never succeeded in meeting our target. This is in contrast to what we see our international allies announcing just this week. The European Union, which is a union of 27 member states and the European Parliament, adopted yesterday a e an EU climate law to reduce their carbon emissions by at least 55% by 2030 compared with 1990 levels. And I want to underline that 1990 levels. So that's even more profound than had they set um, the levels at 2005. They also committed to spending at least 30% of their $1.8 trillion long-term budget on climate-related measure, measures. The EU's target was previously 40%. And so the target that we are announcing today is one that the EU had previously and they have chosen to shed as being inadequate. The United Kingdom also announced this week that it plans to cut its carbon emissions by 78% below 1990 levels by 2035. They also shed a target. Uh, their target had previously been 55% and they deem that to be inadequate and not sufficiently ambitious. And finally, we see today that the United States has announced a new target for themselves 
of between 50 and 50, uh, 52% reductions in emissions from 2005 levels uh, by 2030. They've also committed to a whole of government approach, analyzing every sector, uh, and their target had been the same as ours, which was 30%. And so we see again that Canada um, is, is uh, abandoning the opportunity, not only to lead, but also to position Canada uh, in a competitive way uh, with respect uh, to its international allies. And the question that I have is, when did our government give up on trying to be the best, on trying to have the most ambitious targets? Why do we think that it is not possible for Canada to meet the same targets and set the same targets as its international partners and allies? Uh, I say that that is not the case. I say that people in Canada want us to be ambitious on the climate, that we have everything that it takes to be ambitious on the climate, that this is how we will secure our economic future and create the jobs of the future as well. And so once again, today, we call upon the government to review and revise its target. It is never too late and adopt the 60% because you simply cannot call yourself a climate uh, champion if you have set a target that is too low, if you do not have a carbon budget, if you do not <clears throat> take a whole of government approach to tackling the climate emergency, if you do not sufficiently invest in um, a green recovery and a green economy, if you continue to approve oil exploration projects, if you continue to build new pipelines, and if you continue to subsidize fracking, None of those things are compatible with being truly committed to doing our fair share and also seizing the tremendous opportunity that we have. And it is an opportunity. Uh, if we focus on a green recovery in the way that the United States has just announced, in the way that the European Union has announced, in the way that Japan has announced, the United Kingdom has announced, then we have the opportunity to truly set ourselves on a path uh, for a, uh, a very competitive economy of the future. And I, for one, am very tired of seeing uh, Canada fall further and further behind in the global race to launch a green economy, while other countries, including the US now, push ahead in planning one. Uh, we know that what has to be done, uh, we know that it is possible, we see that our partners have the ambition. And on behalf of all of those, all of us in Canada, and future generations, I ask our government to be more ambitious on our behalf. And certainly the Green Party of Canada uh, has that ambition. We have a plan, uh, it's a doable plan and it aligns with our international partners. Alors aujourd'hui, uh, le gouvernement du Canada a annoncé uh, que le Canada uh, va adopter une cible d'entre uh, entre 40 et 45% à réduction dans nos gaz à effet de serre uh, au-dessus des niveaux de uh, 2005 uh, d'ici 2030. Uh, malheureusement, ce n'est pas suffisant. Uh, le Parti vert est un parti qui cherche toujours la coopération, la co collaboration, mais dans le cas dans, uh, du climat, on, on doit être franche, on doit dire la réalité. Et la réalité est, 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 est que euh, le cible adopté aujourd'hui n'est pas suffisant. Euh, le gouvernement doit adopter, notre pays doit adopter une cible de au moins 60% de réduction dans nos gaz à effet de serre euh, des niveaux de 2005 euh, d'ici 2030. Euh, pourquoi? Parce qu'on sait que c'est le minimum nécessaire pour le Canada à faire si on veut respecter uh, les conseils uh, des scientifiques qui ont été très clairs sur le point que le Canada, s'il veut contribuer d'une manière équitable um, à combattre uh, le réchauffement climatique et garder le réchauffement au-dessus de 1,5 uh, degrés uh, Celsius, uh, il faut absolument qu'on réduise uh, notre, uh, nos gaz à effet de serre uh, de au moins 60%. Uh, la réalité, est que le Canada est un des plus grands uh, uh, émetteurs uh, des gaz à effet de serre, uh, une des plus, uh, une des cinq plus grands émetteurs uh, per capita des gaz à effet de serre. Nous n'avons jamais réussi à atteindre, atteindre nos, nos cibles pour réduire uh, gaz à effet de serre 
et même pendant la pandémie, nos émissions ont continué à augmenter. Tout ça dans, le, dans la face des, des, de nos alliés internationaux qui ont cette semaine fait des promesses à adapter des lois pour réduire leurs gaz à effet de serre. À l'Union européenne, a le, a, on a adopté une loi, une loi sur le climat pour réduire leurs gaz à effet de serre par au moins 55 comparable des niveaux de 1990. Um, et uh, le, uh, le Royaume-Uni, ils ont adopté une cible de 60, um, 78 au, aussi au-dessus du niveau de 90. Uh, 90. Uh, les États-Unis, ils ont annoncé une cible de entre 50 et 52 réduction uh, des niveaux de 2005 uh, d'ici uh, 2030. Alors, maintenant, nous, nous nous éloignons de plus en plus de nos alliés. Nous avons adopté un plan beaucoup moins, moins ambitieux que nos alliés, qui sait que le futur est vert, que les économies du futur est vert, que les économies qui seront les plus compétitives sont les économies vertes. Alors, c'est impossible pour le Canada de se présenter comme un champion uh, du climat, d'assumer un rôle de leadership global. Si notre cible est trop faible, si nous n'avons pas un budget de carbone, si nous n'avons pas adopté une approche uh, qui, qui uh, touche sur tous les, uh, les, uh, les, les enjeux du gouvernement, gouvernemental, si uh, nous continuons à investir, um, à, um, à, um, à, um, à construire les oléoducs, si on con uh, continue à investir uh, dans les projets, uh, projets de facturation hydraulique, et si on continue à donner le feu vert à des, pro, um, des programmes, uh, projets, pardon, d'exploration de um, uh, des uh, explorations uh, sur uh, nos côtes. Uh, on sait qu'une relance verte est la solution. On voit que nos voisins, que nos alliés investissent um, sincèrement et profondément dans une relance verte. Uh, si notre gouvernement continue de passer à côté de cette opportunité, on laisse notre futur économique en péril, on laisse nos travailleurs dans les secteurs fossiles en péril et on, continue, on, va, on va nous mettre dans une position beaucoup moins compétitive. Et moi, je dis que j'ai vraiment, j'ai marre de voir notre pays continuer à perdre le cours, à lancer une, une économie verte dans un moment où on voit tous nos alliés le faire. Um, et je crois que c'est vraiment le moment de dire que le gouvernement va, va prendre uh, un rôle de leadership uh, ambitieux comme uh, les personnes ici au Canada, les gens au Canada réclament uh, et que nous aussi pouvons faire les mêmes choses pour le climat que nos alliés. Nous, nous, nous avons tout ce qu'il faut pour le faire. Merci beaucoup. This now ends the Facebook Live portion of today's event. We will now move on to the media availability. One question, one follow-up. If you have a question, please raise your hand. For our first question, it will go to Alex Ballengal with the star. Alex? Hi, good morning. Um, just on this, uh, so 60% uh, as our quote unquote fair share, can you unpack that a bit? I know the IPCC says the global average to uh, you know rain and warming to 1.5 degrees should be 45% below 2010 levels. On the face of it, you know, if we go 40 to 45, that would be potentially, you could argue that's our fair share, but, but you obviously are endorsing what the environmentalists are saying, the 60% target. Um, why is that? Why is that, in your view, what Canada should do? Because it's, again, every country is different. And the 60% reduction for Canada is the reflection of where we are, Alex. We are significantly behind our international allies. We are significantly behind um, the overwhelming majority of developed countries. So we're talking about where we are and where we were starting from in 2005. As I said, we have never uh, met one of our targets. Canada often ranges in the top three worst emitters of greenhouse gases per capita in the world. Our levels continue of greenhouse gas emissions continue to increase. And so in our case, we have more work to do. It's just that simple. 
Uh, this is what um, this is what our fair share of reducing greenhouse gases represents. Uh, this is what our you know our nationally determined contribution needs to look like. And again, it's completely doable. It's completely doable for Canada. We we've seen today and over the course of this week that uh, developed countries around the world understand not only the importance but the opportunity of setting an ambitious goal and putting some weight behind it in terms of enforceability, accountability, a whole of government's approach. And so there, there, there is nothing stopping us except for political will at this point um, and having a, a credible plan to, to get us there. Uh, I, I know that we can do this. Uh, I know also that people in Canada have said they want us to lead globally on this. And what we have done today simply does not set us up as global leaders on greenhouse gas uh, emissions reductions. Thank you, Minnie and Paul. Just on a separate Paul. subject, I got to ask you about this. Um, last week, uh, the diversity coordinator of the Green Party wrote a letter to um, a bunch of people in the party. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen it, but basically saying uh, racism is a quote unquote very real problem in the Green Party and calling for resignations of unnamed officials in the party um, who uh, she uh, essentially blamed for, for exacerbating this problem and not preventing it or tackling it if sufficiently. I wonder what you think, do you agree with the sentiments in those letters and what's your reaction to just seeing something like that happening within the Green Party? Well, thanks for the question, Alex. And as you know, I met uh, not that long ago, I think just around the, the time of your reporting uh, with the editorial board for over an hour and answered a number of questions about this. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first three questions were about this. So I, I spoke about it quite extensively. And as I said at the time, the party is, uh, well, I will speak personally for myself. Uh, I became the leader of the Green Party on a platform of diversity and inclusion, and uh, the members responded to that by electing me. Uh, I'm committed to making sure that the Green Party is extremely welcoming to all. Uh, I want it to be the most diverse party in Canadian politics, and <clears throat> anything, uh, anything that I can do personally to ensure that that is the case, I will absolutely do that. It is a, a very profound long-standing commitment of mine as um, the person who founded the first organization in Canada focused on increasing diversity in Canadian politics back in the early 2000s. So if we see anything uh, or anyone doing anything that is incompatible with that commitment to diversity uh, that I have and that our party has, uh, it's nothing that I will would ever tolerate. Uh, and certainly uh, I will do all that I can to make sure that there is no place uh, for anyone that uh, that does not support uh, that very um, very it's a, it's it's an ambitious but at the same time I, it's a, it's an objective that I believe every single political party should have which is to be welcoming diverse and inclusive. Thank you, Alex. Our next question will go to Laurence from Radio Canada. Oui, bonjour, bonjour Madame Paul. Bonjour. bonjour. Um, Monsieur Guilbeault, hier, euh, nous a dit en entrevue sur justement les cibles du gouvernement Trudeau, il a dit « les cibles, c'est important, mais ce qui est vraiment important, c'est d'avoir un plan pour y arriver ». Puis au Canada, on a souvent eu un gros débat sur les cibles, mais euh, nous, on a un plan concret, on a une taxe sur le carbone, ce que les États-Unis n'ont pas, par exemple. Qu'est-ce que vous répondez à ça? Bon, ma réponse, c'est que c'est en fait, tout à fait possible d'avoir un plan, mais aussi une cible qui correspond aux sciences et correspond à ce qui, à ce qui est nécessaire pour faire notre part pour réduire euh, les gaz à effet de serre euh, globalement et aussi euh, d'éviter de, de, euh, le pire euh, um, réchauffement. Euh, on voit aujourd'hui que euh, le président, il n'a pas que annoncé euh, une cible Uh, il a annoncé une cible uh, qui, qui considère uh, tous les secteurs de l'économie, qui considère comment uh, ça va um, contribuer à créer uh, les emplois du futur, des emplois bien payés. Uh, on voit dans le cas de l'Union européenne, avec leur cible même plus ambitieuse que les États-Unis, qu'ils ont aussi, ils ont un plan, ils ont adopté une loi avec un plan. Uh, pour, um, et ils ont mis l'argent uh, uh, um, uh, derrière ce plan. 
ils ont déjà uh, promis d'investir uh, un minimum de 30 de leur uh, budget de long terme uh, de un, um, un point... Oh. 1,8 000 milliards de, de, de dollars dans, dans les secteurs qui vont, qui vont contribuer à une relance verte, à une économie verte. Alors, c'est quasiment, bon, je, je rejette l'idée que ce n'est pas possible de créer un plan ici au Canada qui, qui corresponde à une cible ambitieuse. Uh, on, nous, on manque encore un plan. Nous avons eu le, une présentation du budget uh, lundi, uh, mais sans un plan compréhensif dans la manière que les États-Unis et l'Union européenne uh, le font. Uh, alors, uh, le Parti vert, nous avons proposé un plan. C'est un plan concret. C'est un plan uh, où nous, non, avec un budget. Uh, C'est un plan uh, compréhensif pour atteindre une cible de, de 60 Et je dis... Clairement aujourd'hui, même comme chef d'un parti qui cherche toujours la coopération et la collaboration, que ce n'est pas suffisant, que nous sommes en train de, de, de vraiment, euh, 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 de vraiment euh, abandonner euh, nos jeunes, euh, de vraiment euh, leur, euh, leur laisser sans un une, une avenir euh, euh, où le, le, le planète est, est habitable. Uh, ce n'est pas, pas juste et, et nous sommes en train de le faire um, même, au même moment que nos alliés sont en train de lancer leur propre plan ambitieux. ambitieux. Euh, puis en question de suivi, quel est le, le risque que vous pensez pour le Canada euh, dans la façon dont le pays est perçu à travers le monde, la, la réputation du Canada sur la scène internationale? Le fait que, bon, on est parmi euh, l'une des cibles les plus euh, basses là, des, des pays du G7 en ce moment. Euh, comment est-ce que vous pensez que le Canada de Justin Trudeau est perçu sur la question climatique en ce moment? Le, le Canada n'a pas, pas une excellente réputation sur le climat. Nous avons, non, ça fait des années et des années que euh, l'Union européenne, pardon, que l'ONU, euh, les Nations unies euh, nous demandent d'augmenter notre cible. Ça fait des années que les, les scientifiques uh, sur le climat uh, nous demandent uh, d'augmenter nos cibles. Uh, nous ne l'avons pas fait. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons choisi d'adopter une, 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 uh, une cible que nos alliés ont, ont rejetée. Non, et que ils ont rejeté uh, comme insuffisant. L'Union européenne, ils ont eu une, une cible de 40 mais en fait, une cible de 40 à, à, à en, en comparaison des uh, niveaux de, de, de 1990 uh, et aussi uh, à les, le Royaume-Uni. Uh, ils ont rejeté ces, um, ces cibles parce qu'ils savent que ce n'est pas suffisant. Alors aujourd'hui, malheureusement, nous avons encore passé à côté d'une opportunité en fait, d'assumer un rôle de leadership uh, sur le climat. Nous ne l'avons jamais eu. Um, et c'est très difficile pour nous d'aller taquiner les autres pays si nous, ici, ne faisons pas ce qui est nécessaire uh, pour contribuer à, à les efforts uh, globaux. Ce n'est pas possible d'être un leader si on continue avec uh, la fracturation hydraulique, à investir dans ces projets, à, à um, construire uh, des oléoducs, uh, ni de, no, de, de donner le feu vert à des projets d'exploration um, pétrolier. Uh, tout ça est incompatible et le monde le sait et on voit maintenant que nos alliés sont, non, ils ont pris le type train pour le futur et nous, on reste là à côté uh, sur uh, non, le plafond de la station. Thank you, Laurence. Our next question goes to Marika Walsh from the Globe and Mail. Hi there. Thanks so much for taking my question. I'm just wondering how you respond to people who say, Um, sort of that 2005 baseline is an easier, easier target for the U.S. to meet because of historical emissions and the historical emissions trajectory. Um, you know, given the fact that Canada will have to pay a lot more and have stricter policies to get to its lower target, does that mean Canada shouldn't aim higher? Canada has the chance of a lifetime to become a global leader in the economy of the future. That is really what we are talking about. And this is why you see the most developed, richest economies in the world investing so heavily in, uh, in a green uh, transition, uh, investing so heavily in reducing their greenhouse gases, investing so heavily in renewables and clean technology 
and the infrastructure, both regulatory and physical, that will support uh, a green uh, recovery and a green economy. Uh, so let's, let's be clear about, about that as well. It's very important that the people of Canada understand that if we are seeking to position ourselves well for the future, uh, that it involves, uh, it involves uh, investing in a green recovery and in a green economy. I am quite certain that our international allies are very committed to a livable planet and to um, mitigating the worst impacts of, of global warming and to keeping us below one and a half degrees Celsius uh, for ethical and moral reasons. But at, I, and uh, you know, so I will say that I also know that um, these developed countries, the US, the 27 member states of the EU, the United Kingdom, Japan, are also countries that are very ambitious for their economic prosperity. Uh, and so the reason that they are doing this is, is also because they know that this is the time uh, to position themselves to be competitive in the future. And so uh, when we talk about what we are capable of doing, uh, there is, of course, what we're, we should do uh, to do our fair share. And 60% uh, is our fair share. And I don't think we need to compare ourselves to anywhere else. Uh, but if we do compare ourselves to the United States, we can certainly say we have <clears throat> a partner now who is very excited uh, to work with us to make sure that we reach an ambitious target. So that no longer uh, is a barrier for us. But even so, even without that, uh, meeting the target is doing our fair share uh, and also making sure that we have a competitive, diversified economy for the future. So this is just a win-win. And, and I continue to be confused. Our party continues to be very confused as to why uh, the government continues to pass, uh, pass this opportunity up, uh, continues to say that Canada is less ambitious, uh, less capable uh, of being uh, first in line for a green future. Uh, I don't think that corresponds with the way people in Canada see themselves. Thank you, Marika. I would like to ask now if there are any more questions for this portion of today's press conference. Thank you for joining us today. This now concludes today's press conference with leader of the Green Party, Annemie Paul. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.